You really should be interviewing Enid Bagnall about this. I wanted to ask you about her, in fact. I heard that you visited her in, in Brighton. Yes. I've, I've, I've visited her before, as a matter of fact, uh -huh. with Irene Selznick, who's a friend of mine. After after they did the uh, the chalk garden. Yeah. Do you like sugar? Uh, no, nothing. Just uh, nothing just at all. Tea. You like it strong? Uh, medium strong. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll do mine first then. She's a fascinating. Where is she been? Eighty-five or something. Around in there. Yeah. Around in there. But she's quite extraordinary. And. Uh, um, I've never done well, I've never done one of her plays before. Believe it or not, they bought National Velvet the story for me when I was at RKL. Isn't that funny? It is. Yeah. All those years ago. Why did they make it then? What happened? Well, then they just didn't make it, and then I got uh, beyond it, and they sold it to uh, folk Liz. Oh, that's very funny. That's funny, isn't it? And then uh, Irene um, had had been, I think I was doing, I'm not dead positive about this, but I think I was doing Suddenly Last Summer, and Irene Selznick had been in London, and she said, you must meet Enid, because she's so marvelous. And I said, but I don't know her, you know, and I would be most embarrassed. She said, just go down and spend a weekend. She'd love to have you. And I thought, well, I wouldn't dare do that. I would die of fright. And so finally I thought, but I have to call her. So I thought, what am I going to say? And then I thought, well, I don't know what I'm going to say, but I, just something will come to me at the spur of the moment. So I dialed the number, and her voice answered, hello. And my mind went absolutely blank. And I said, and she lives in a place you have to know, called North End House in Rotting Dean. So I said, Lady North? <laughs> and there was a long pause. And she said, come again. <laughs> and I said, Lady, and God help me, Jones. And she said, that's better. <laughs> so that was our start. Isn't that a terrible, I told terrible. her that story, she didn't remember it at all. I nearly collapsed. But she's a fascinating girl. She's an extraordinary woman, I think. And I think her books are quite extraordinary. And do you, are you very familiar with them or not? Not, not so as much. I mean, her, her, uh, her play, at least, uh, uh, the... Uh, was the Chinese Prime Minister and the other one. I'll get some lemon. You just saw the plays. Yeah, the plays. Did you, never, did you read your autobiography? I never have. No. Oh, you must. Mm -hmm. see. Just, if you want a real thrill, this is one of the great autobiographies and several of her books. Just unique to me in there. Yes. Um, no lemon. Yes. In there, understanding of the human animal. Mm -hmm. Now, she's an enormously definite person herself in what she sees and feels, but boy, she picks up every, you know, waver in the air. She's quite extraordinary and a great gift for life and humor and, uh, and uh, the truth, I think. And she uses the most beautiful English, the wonderful sense of the English language. Is this a, a new play, or, or is it a rewritten one? Or no, no, it's a, well, it's a play that I think she wrote about four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and then it was done out of town, and it wasn't right at all, and she was by another title, and then she rewrote it completely, and it was sent to me about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Noah Wilman, who's directing it, had been working on, has been working on it, on it with her mm -hmm. over a, a period of time. Oh. Thank you. No lemon in or do you? No, 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 just, just like that, just like that. 
I think I got both more than my share here. But um, she's extraordinary looking and, and very, very forceful creature. Mm -hmm. Um, they said, no one brought the play to me. Um, I just couldn't sort of forget it. And um, so then I, you know, finally said, well, I'll just do it, that's all. Well, what is the nature of the character that, that you play? You oh, well, the nature of the character is always the nature of me, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm the old, la old lady in the mansion. Um, I mean, I'm not an artist, I'm not a writer, but <clears throat> I'm a woman of very age. Professional person at all? Or, or no, not a professional person at all. Mm -hmm. Mr. County, somebody in, you know, County, England. And it interests me. My mother always said, if you do what interests you, at least one person is pleased. And <laughs> I think that's a, well, You know, it's hard to find. It's a, it's a very the, the peculiar bunch of writing that is being done today. Uh, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a bit, a lot of it doesn't interest me. Not a one whit. Do you mean in theater or, or in books or ever, everywhere and everything? Yeah. They're not on topics that interest me all that much. Mm -hmm. The plays that I've seen. You aren't interested in... All the movies. You, you aren't interested in, in young men that blind horses and... Well, I'm not interested in the philosophy of homosexuality and your, or living with a horse. In, when you're 15 years old is the only solution to delight in this world. Mm -hmm. No, the philosophy of that play offends me. Yeah. It offends me. And then, you know, to say, well, I, I cannot feel those colored cottage, those colored cottage and new car every few years. I think that's, I think it was marvelously produced. Mm -hmm. But I don't, uh, I mean, does, what does it mean? It mean anything. Unless the brain behind it is just totally diseased, as far as I can see. I mean, that's a sad attitude, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't find that that interesting. I don't think that is what <clears throat> the kind of thinking that has made the world either progress or survive. I think it's picky or mm -hmm. titillating, interesting for an evening. I don't think the audience know what the hell it was about. Well, I, think was, I think it was so brilliantly directed that it fooled them. Well, that's the point to it. Also, the uh, reviews and the controversy about it were, were such that it would attract uh, people, I think, to see mm. it. You know, just to, mm. to have seen it, to be able to talk about it, and it becomes a... It becomes a sort of a thing, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, and I'm sure so many plays that have done well, ser so-called serious plays in recent years, that they become a conversation piece as much as a, a play. You mean if the topic is sort of enough? Right, or, or, or in fact, uh, you know, you get uh, wildly uh, raving reviews and also some adverse ones that mm. were well, dating back to like uh, Murat Saad, although I, I like that my, uh, myself, but certainly it was the controversy of it, I think, that really... Mm -hmm. you know. And the product of any talented man is interesting, mm -hmm. really, good or bad, it's interesting, I think. Well, he's a, and, and Schaffer's a talented man, certainly. Big problem. Peter Schaffer's a talented man, certainly. Certainly is, yes. certainly is. But then I'm sad when a talented man is interested in that, mm -hmm. you see, because I think uh, it just, well, how do I know, just doesn't interest me. Would well, you feel that's true about, generally, about the theater today? I mean, that most plays that are... I think a lot of them, yeah, you know, I'm not too mm -hmm. sympathetic with yeah. a lot of them, you know. I mean, I, I, prefer things that I've seen through the years. Some of them I like very much. Mm -hmm. But by and large, and some of the performances are very, very interesting, I think we're in a sort of dry period. And I think the use of the language is kind of 
Well, I think we make that a lot of uh, what fascinated me about this play yeah. is that is that the the um, thinking in it and the use of the language is not as sort of um, what shall I say uh, groupy as the stuff that is put on today, you know, and is considered absolutely fascinating. I think it has much more lasting interest because it's on a more general topic. Of course, the alternate would be to do uh, classics too, you know. No, I don't think you can just do classics. I think you have to do what is peculiar to your own period, mm -hmm. certainly. Yeah. But there certainly are also things that you can like and things that you dislike, and things that at a certain age interest you, and another age you look back and you think, well, they can't be serious, you know. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I don't remember bringing pu pu home plays that I thought were absolutely thrilling and reading them to my parents. And I think they thought, oh dear, 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 what is this? You know, because mm -hmm. they seemed trivial and silly. And just to know what you of them today, when I laugh at them today, I have, they seem trivial and um, sneaky peaky and silly, just silly to me and about some poor wretched freak that shouldn't be written about. And I'm sorry that the, the, the sort of, because I don't think they represent the general public. They deal, really? Well, because the, there's a crucial question, what's the general public and what's the general theater-going public? That somehow the theater-going public more and more has become, I think, kind of a uh, elite in a way. I mean, it's not a, a really broad audience like it might have once been, I think, that somehow oh, it's, uh, yeah. it's it's much broader than it ever was would you think so that's oh yes yeah. much broader mm -hmm. i mean not as intellectual much broader mm -hmm. it's really appealing to an entirely lower grade in intelligence mm -hmm. and uh, they're on the topic of sex well that's a pretty broad that they're all on the topic of that now yeah. practically by and large mm -hmm. wouldn't you say not uh large Entirely. I mean, it's, it's certainly a, an area of, of theater today that I like a lot. I'm very fond of a lot of the uh, younger English playwrights, like uh, David Story and Tom Stoppard. Yes, yes. And uh, Peter Nichols and Man, so on. They're, they're not yes. writing really about sex at all, as a matter of no, fact. It's, it's no, very much in something no, else. No, they were talking about here. Yeah. But here, uh, there's not the one that much writing going on, I guess, except among the black playwrights, there are not a number of mm -hmm. good ones coming along. But you do like uh, Tennessee Williams, certainly, you still would. Uh, yeah, Williams, you know. yeah, but I mean, he's much more of my era, isn't yeah. he? Do you know I'm what sure, I mean? Yeah. I think it's very, and then I think one, one becomes, uh, 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 you like the sort of stuff that you were brought up with to a certain degree, and you are at home in that, but you also, now this play that I'm doing, I don't think is uh, uh, conventional, to my era, but I think it is my, uh, uh, it's a thing that I can do, that interests me to do in this era. Mm -hmm. Let me say that. Because the theater has changed, I think, a good deal. Well, one thing I, I, I do wonder, having, having done the, the uh, movie of the Albee play, whether in fact you'd be interested in, in uh, ever doing uh, Albee or... Uh, yes, I'm, or I'm interested in all those men. Mm -hmm. I'm there, but they're all one has to be interested yeah. in. Are they? Mm -hmm. There they are, and that's the interest. And so, if something comes along that you do like, now, I, I really, I have seen that play several times, and I didn't really totally understand what that play was about. Talking about uh, uh, talking about delicate balance. Yeah. And then when uh, Eli Landau suggested that I do it, and Tony Richardson came over here and talked to me, I thought, well, yes, no, yes, no, and then I thought, well. Well, yes, why not see what it's about? Because mm -hmm. really by playing it, you can see what it's about. Mm -hmm. Or at least you can think you can see what it's about. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. As we're talking, I'm wondering, I'm trying to remember the play. Because it was a little more understandable than, say, but it was, the Alice, but in some Yes, way. yes, I think it was. I think it was it's quite clear, clear, as a matter of fact. Well, what uh, sort of plays have been offered to you, though, in recent years? I mean, is, is there a range of things that would come along? Or I'm curious. Yeah, they get offered to me. Mm -hmm. Things get asked to me. 
What, what, what kind of thing? Could you, could you characterize the... No. You know? It's like waffle and stuff. <laughs> Musicals too? So you know, yeah, you know, so. Yes, and the general line of thing that would suit somebody of my age if they thought I was available to it. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, one gets fussier and fussier because the, the, the kind of stuff that you can do becomes more and more limited, I think, that you can do and feel that you can do well. Why do you say that? What, what do you. Well, you, 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 you know, you pass beyond a certain type of storytelling and develop into another. So, I mean, it has to suit you now. Sometimes they send you stuff that's totally inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you, you, you just have to, I think, be very cagey that you pick, I don't know, I pick what interests me to do <laughs> as a person. And I've been lucky enough to be able to do that. Have you, have you always done that? Which same is that? Yeah, I think I have really. Yeah. One one or two things I've done where I wanted to, uh, uh, where I did them for evil reasons, you know, just because I didn't want somebody else to do them, or well, some sort of cheap reason, and they never were any good. Because I think if you're sold on something, at least that's a very positive thing, isn't it? You know, you do something that you really want to do, and then if it's a disaster, at least you have wanted to do it and you've completed something, but if you do something that you don't really want to do, and you think, oh, I think it's hopeless. Clearly the uh, danger that many actors uh, and, and uh, actors would face would be, uh, I don't know, listening to the wrong person at the wrong time, someone convincing them for a false reason. No, I never listen to anybody. To do it. And I never let anybody read it mm -hmm. or anything until I have made up my mind. I have, have nobody but myself to blame. I get sent the thing and then uh, I, I never, I don't think you can do that. Mm -hmm. Because if I've noticed, that, you know, it's fascinating. I mean, look at the history of, for instance, Oklahoma. I can remember Terry Helvin saying, oh, okay, some money in this and that. I said, I never put any money in the theater. And I think we only have our own opinion. That's a, an extraordinary thing that what is right for you could be wrong for me, totally. Mm -hmm. And that becomes very confusing because what I see and what you see with exactly the same material is totally different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, also, I mean, in reading it, because I'm talking about reading it, because when you see it, then you see it done, and it might touch something very sympathetic in you and leave me cold as ice. Well, there also is a thing, too, that things do change. I mean, as they're being put on, as whether it's a film or a, or a play, I mean, that can look differently on stage than what it's seen when you... When you no, but it's in the mind of the, of the director, isn't mm -hmm. it? You see, Equus, I think... Had, had it been done by somebody else, it might not have been anywhere near as, as successful because it was a yep. brilliant production. Mm -hmm. It was a brilliant conception oh. of something. Now, obviously, the material also has to be at least colorful. It's colorful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't interest me. It's colorful. Could, could you say what some of those things were you did for false reasons at all? Would you want to? talk about that. Yeah. No, I don't think he does them for false reasons. I think he's too good for that. No, no, no. I, I mean, in, in your own career, you were saying before that there were several times, in fact, in Oh, the things that I, I did for well. false reasons, just where I felt that I, I did, or I did them to, because I thought, oh, the poor old things, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I should uh, do this, or I... And that's a bad reason. That's a dead reason for doing anything. And if you, and, and the performances, that, uh, for instance, I can remember with Morning Glory, when I read Morning Glory, I just thought, oh my God, that's the most wonderful part that was ever written for anyone. And it was on Pandora Berman's desk. And I just picked it up when I was waiting for him on that in his office. And um, I read part of it, rushed, rushed out of the office and just took it with me because nobody saw me just lift it off the secretary's desk. Mm -hmm. So then I went back and I said, I'm sorry I'm late, but this is what I'd like to do. He said, it's not for you. I said, it has to be. Who's it for? And he said, Connie Bennett. And I said, no, no. Has she read it? And he said, no. I said, me, <laughs> me, me. And she never read it. And she never read it. Mm -hmm. And some friends of mine, who shall be nameless, and who were three, two of them, 
brilliant people in the theater and what a close friend of mine saw it without music after it was finished and said, this is going to destroy uh, you. You must buy it back. So that's interesting. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. it's, I mean, that, that was without music in it. And Max Dino, the, uh, the man who was working under, what the hell was his name, uh, did the most wonderful score for it. But it just, it's the, I think if you believe in something, very often you just can pull it off. One time I, I uh, read what you said, and because many of you have said it, but, mm. but that, uh, you felt you hadn't learned anything about acting since Morning Glory, that, that what you knew then. Oh, no, I, is that, is that? I just, well, I saw Morning Glory. My brother-in-law has a, 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 some of the films that I've done, and he had a, a copy of Morning Glory. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, that's old enough for me to look at, because I can't even remember that person. And uh, then I was absolutely fascinated. I thought, my God. Not bad at all. <laughs> what does one learn? That's terrifying. That was uh, what 1934. That's a long time ago. But but you have learned a lot since then. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Have I? I hope so. But I wonder. I wonder. Because there was, uh, uh, in my view, Zoe Akins wrote a lot of great parts for ladies. No question about that, and it was a wonderful part. But, uh, well, I don't know. I think acting is a, naturally, you, you have to presume that you learn something, but don't you think it's something you can sort of either do or not do? Not being an actor, I It's a know. sort of a knack. Well, don't you think you can either write or not write, or paint or not paint, or paint badly? You know. You're, you're born with the talent and that's... Well, I think you're born with the talent of some sort. <laughs> Childish as it may be in this particular instance. But I mean, after all, kids can act, you know. I mean, Shirley Temple was four, wasn't she? And she started and she was remarkable. <laughs> the younger she was, the better she was as an actress, though. Yes, yeah. yes. But I mean, so much... It was a natural thing there, obviously. You know, what yes, it is, a, it is a sort of... Uh, and most of the great musicians. There it is, isn't it? It's a quirk of the something. But were you as good an actress before Morning Glory as you were? Oh, uh, I don't think, of, no, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'm not <laughs> sure I do now to tell you the honest <laughs> truth. Uh, uh, I enjoy oh, go it. On. I enjoy it. No, no, I'm serious. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't think, I don't think, I don't, let me say, I don't take myself as seriously as I would if I could be a really good painter or if I could be a really good writer. Well, why is that? Do you I sound like a Joe and little bit and she said, oh, I want to be an opera singer or whatever, or else you never really are satisfied. What you could do, you take for granted and you want to do, you know, something else. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, it's, I think it's all involved in selling yourself, isn't it? You are selling yourself. Here I am. Look at me. Aren't I fascinating? I think that's embarrassing. Really. But you are fascinating. Well, I'm... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone is trying to concentrate on that to make me think that that's the truth. But I happen to be the person involved in it. And I know just exactly how fascinating I am. And how fa fascinating I am. A <laughs> but it's... it's um, I don't, I think it's a charming talent, but I don't think it's like a singer, really, is it? Because, I mean, the singer is selling the voice, and we're, we're, it's, it's the least of the, <clears throat> the least of the things. Well, usually they would The one gets very well paid for. <laughs> usually they would break it down, and they would say that, that uh, in terms of, uh, you know, writing and painting, that that would be a creative art, and I suppose acting and singing might be considered interpretive art. And that would be the distinction that you would make, that you're, 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 you're doing someone else's words and you're being directed by someone mm. rather than a, a writer, say, or a painter. Yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean, there are all sorts of... And then it's that. a terrible thing about this profession that you have to do it at night. I mean, if I could get all, all the performances at about <laughs> early in the morning, I'd be the happiest actor in the world. But it's, it's a terrible thing. I like to 
go to bed at, um, you know, about 7.30 and get up at 4.30. And this is a terrible thing. Now, if I were a writer, it would just be great, wouldn't it? Well, most writers prefer to you know, work in the morning. That's it. Yes, yes, to yes. Start early and finish up with lunch. But I mean, to have to summon everything up at, at least at 7 o'clock in some places now and 7.30. Mm -hmm. That's better than summoning it, summoning it up at, at, at 8.50 at night, which is the way I was trained. I used to nearly die. Nearly die. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you now get written, written to your contract that you'd play only matinees or something? Is that well, I thought of that. Yeah. When people complain about matinees, and I thought, boy, you know, when things get tough, I'm going to just take over the matinees for people. I'll just say, you would like an actress to play this part. I'll play it Wednesday and Saturday matinee mm -hmm. for you. Because I love the matinee audiences. They're happy, and I'm happy because I'm wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Did, did you ever fall asleep on stage? Oh, no, no, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't I have one scene in this where I might. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it terrible? Is that one reason why you like like movies? I mean, because there you can work, I mean, sometimes you work nights. Movies are movies. easier. Yeah. Movies are much easier. Oh, movies are much easier. Movies are, you know. Because yeah. the schedule partially, or, or is that just a very minor? No, because of the whole thing. No examination. You're not there to be hit off the head. Character building, the theater is character building. You stick your neck out. Mm -hmm. You're far away from the movies. And you can do it again in the movies. You have to do it at a certain moment and there is no comparison. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing. I'd, I'd, I've never seen any difference in acting in the two mediums. I mean, I don't pick my voice up, and I don't laugh anyway, but I mean, I don't pick my voice up talking to you if you're in there. I just talk louder. But to me, it's very similar. At least the way I do it is very similar. One of the strange Spencer things... Spencer always felt it was uh, similar, mm -hmm. too. Yet there are those those actors who are who are uh, very good in movies and aren't good on the stage, or the or yeah, more, yeah. more likely those who are good yeah, on the stage. And yeah. I think offhand of people <coughs> like uh, I don't know uh, Christopher Plummer and Nicole Williamson and yes. lots of others who yes. are tremendous stage actors. And you don't believe it. And somehow on a film they just uh, don't believe it. Yeah. You don't believe it. It's funny, isn't it? And in, in a curious way, you would think that the danger would be that somebody like that would, because they're big actors that they would act very large on screen, and that would be the problem, they would overact. Sometimes yes. it's quite the opposite, like uh, Stacy Keach is one, who I think is, is a terrific stage actor. Yeah. But, but in films, he almost, like he glazes over, he, he underacts so much, perhaps in compensation for being in a film, that, that he, he loses the performance. Yes. It's a strange thing. Well, then he, he finds it a, a, you see, I can remember when I did my first movie test, and I thought, this, I can do. This is easy. Well, what did you think that? Can you remember what? what? Uh, yes, uh, surely. I mean, I just found it. I didn't. The camera didn't bother me. The people wiggling around didn't bother me. And uh, one had a sort of total control. And, and if it didn't do, if it, in this idiotic test that I did, I did a test for bill of divorcement in material from Holiday, Phil Barry's Holiday. Mm -hmm. And I had understudied in Holiday, so I knew the material backwards, so I thought I'm not going to get scared because I'll, you know, I, I will know the material, absolutely. And Dorothy Parker's husband, Alan Campbell, I don't think they were married then. Uh, Alan, uh, <laughs> give you a line on my, the horror of my character, did the test with me and I said, Alan, don't bother to learn the part, because they'll never see you. You're going to be sitting in a wing back chair, because I don't want you to get the part. I want me to get the part. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and um, for years, I had that test. I dug that test up, and I had it, and it got lost. I don't know what about it. But, um, and I thought I was very nonchalant, you know, and I said, I had picked the material. I had refused to test in the enforcement scene that they sent on because I said the doozer couldn't get a job playing the scene you've said so I won't do that and uh, I didn't have any director for the test mm -hmm. 
and uh, uh, except someone who was just sort of putting, but I was so egomaniacal that I said what to do. Then, in those days, they put a lot of makeup on. Well, of course, I never used much makeup. So I said, now I'll uh, just, you can take a shot of me uh, with my hair the way I wear it, which was absolutely flat, straight back, really the way they wear it today. Mm -hmm. And uh, makeup that I will put on. Well, I, so I took the makeup off and I got, got grease in my eyes and put this, my own makeup on and was dumb enough to let them photograph me this way. But I got the job, and then I saw the test, and I had thought I was very, uh, you know, easy and nonchalant. Well, it was obviously the test of someone who was totally panicked to get the job. I never saw, I mean, it was, at, it was heartbreaking in its eagerness to, to please and to be successful. But, but you passed the test. I passed the test. George Cooper, who was my judge, said I did. W I put a glass down rather well, and he thought well, she has talent. <laughs> Can I give you more tea? You want to make yourself a whiskey? No, no, this is fine. But it's. I think the fact that I think the theatre is much, much more disciplined, and I think you, you. Um, you learn a great deal. See, I have come back all through my career. I have come mm -hmm. back. And uh, because I always feel that if something is as difficult as, uh, 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 to me as, as the theater always has been, that then it must be good for me to do it. This is my puritanical upbringing. Mm -hmm. So I've always come back. Now, I'm very glad I have because I think I've learned a lot. What is, what is difficult is good? And that's I think what is difficult is good. I think if you set a high standard, you know, if you, if you set yourself tasks that are difficult to do in life, it's certainly much better than setting yourself an easy task. If you're in a position to continue to do what is easy, you know, without any, what shall we say, wear and tear. You don't mean that, it, that everything is difficult is necessarily good, I mean. No, 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 but I, no, 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 I don't mean that at all, no. but I mean, if you challenge yourself mm -hmm. and you do something which just happens to be a, a sort of a test, mm -hmm. tests, examinations, they've always been very difficult for me. And as you say, in, in, in films you've always felt that you weren't being examined. At the well, no, time. I, I, ha I have felt that. Now, I mind you, I pick the material very carefully, and I, but I, I have felt you can always do it over again. But I mean, the same thing would be true of me. For instance, in seeing you, I would want to be interesting. And I would want to, you know, and I, I, I never did. I, I don't like to bore you. And, uh, oh, but it's true, you know, you, you, you have to try to get an interview and I'm, but I have to try to make myself an interesting person to be interviewed. Mm -hmm. And then again, we're stuck because we couldn't talk about me. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to talk about uh, how brilliant my work in physics was or how I won the Nobel Prize or anything like that. <laughs> I told you, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think we're going to have a hell of a long way on that one. Everybody's winning them these days, don't you? I think I understand. Seems like it. <laughs> but, uh, um, With all these, these times coming back to, uh, to the theater, mm -hmm. so, uh, have you felt differently at different times in coming back to the stage? I mean, have they really struck it? very strong periods of your life or something? I mean, do you have a different feeling each time you come back? Or? Yes, no, I, th I th find it's a sort of, uh, 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 makes my range wider. Mm -hmm. I think when uh, Lawrence Langner really was responsible for my doing As You Like It, I think he immediately made my range much bigger. Mm -hmm. And Michael Bentall, when I, you know, when I went to Stratford, Connecticut, when I went to Australia with the old Vic, all that. And then when I played in London, I think all that extended uh, uh, me as a as a as a person. And they were all things that you couldn't found in movies either. Right? No, yeah. not possibly, not possibly. This thing, not possibly. The thing that I'm doing now, I it's not possibly in the movies. Mm -hmm. And that's thrilling, you see. And, and then you you um, 
Now, I can't say whether I think, uh, you know, that you say, well, then do you think delicate balance should be done as more people economically and for a small audience? Right, I mean, that's what you wouldn't do. You just see the play, you know, the way you do in Long Day's Journey, you see the play. Well, those are really plays. I mean, I mean the whole they thing is, plays. Is, is that even when you play, it's a play. Sure. Yes, that's right. And there's no, uh, I don't see any reason not to do that. I mean, I don't think that if, if one is a director, I don't think it compares. I mean, I think the movie medium is uh, just thrilling. The movie medium is an extraordinary medium because it's so wide. But the odd thing is, to me, it, it never has the impact that the theater has in, from a performance point of view. Now, I don't understand that. From, from other points of view, it does, of course. So, I mean, Not from remembering the performance mm -hmm. that you've seen in the theater. And that's weird, because the person is way the hell and going far away from you. you know? but, but of course, there is that strange thing, though, that, that uh, to a certain extent, uh, the theater performance, uh, I mean, lives on in, in memory. I mean, and perhaps yes. you pass down to someone else, whereas the film performance, you turn on the television almost every night, if you want to, and see a performance yes. that you might remember. I mean, People are seeing you not only in, in, in the Enid Bagnall play, but they can see you almost any day of the week. That's right. From Morning Glory on back and forth. And yes. So, so, so yes, but I mean the, yeah. the, the impact. The initial uh, impact. Is it, well, it's the difference between a painting and a photograph, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the impact of a painting is for some reason stronger. The play is the, is, is, is the painting. And the play, the, the impact of a performance. Now, whether that is because you uh, you meet a, an audience and a rapport is uh, uh, created between you, the audience, the theater you're in, the play you're doing, of that moment, it's created at that moment, and it's something very, very strong. Does that mean that, that as a member of the audience, you yourself are more moved by a by a play experience. Yes, yes, that's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. And I think it's, it's, and I think one uh, reaches a, a sort of moment that you probably never do reach otherwise. The electricity is, is stronger. The impact of it in both directions is strong. Could, could you say some of the uh, performances in the theater that have moved you, that have really stirred you at all? Or oh, when you think of you know, I can't, I, I never can go back and say this stirred me. Yes. Oh, there have been many, many, many. I, c I couldn't sit and say, you know, that the, yeah. the... At the uh, same time, though, um, uh, movies make us, you know, make us cry. Oh, yeah, yeah the, they, yes, they do, but they, it hasn't the clarity. Mm -hmm. It hasn't the third dimension. It's really a director's medium, a fascinating medium for a director, I mm -hmm. think. And a damn good medium for the, for the listener. It's a great medium, very. Mm -hmm. But I think for the actor, for someone like Larry, who's exposed himself to all, many, many, many of the great parts, he's had a thrilling career, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing he's managed to do, too, is, is to do some of those great parts in, in movies, too. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I but the great part of them is in the, it was in the theater. Oh, absolutely. The best. Right. Well, and the impact there, although the band was the same. No, no, it's, it's uh, quite true. It's certainly, you know, uh, it's Henry V <coughs> and all, all the rest. I mean, yeah. will live on as, as superb performances mm -hmm. on screen. But still, when I think of when I, you know, been moved most by him, it has, in fact, been on stage. So yes. There you are. Yeah. yeah. And of course, I saw him when he first came over here. I was working in the lake, and he was working in uh, the Green Bay Tree, both for Jed. And Larry was a kid, he was just starting then. And my God, I can remember him today. He and James Dale in that day, and he was absolutely brilliant. How are you in the lake then, you see? Well, I got better, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing. <laughs> you say, I couldn't have got worse. <laughs> I improved. Mm -hmm.
But one does actually learn about acting as you go along. You learn more. I mean, the more you live, the more you learn about acting, about everything, I guess, don't you? Remember that? Yeah, I don't think it necessarily means you're better at it. Not necessarily. But, uh, yes, what I learned more than I learned there, because I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. But there are many moments now when I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what do you do when you don't know what you're doing? You just go on and go ahead and do it? And Yes, I think you'd just go ahead and do it. Did you finish oh, yours? Oh, well, wait a minute, no, you've got... Fine. That's fine. Oh, God, no, I don't oh, want I'll that. Wait a minute, dump it in the fireplace. <laughs> Is that good for logs, I guess, isn't it? Well, it, that, I'm figuring those logs are not going to be lit tonight. And I think you were a long so way off from writing logs. That's fine. Just, just fine. Too strong? No, that's fine. You have some more to make. Okay. Yeah. But, but it's a fascinating, it's a wonderful business to be in. Movie or theater, you know, it's a delicious you aren't sorry. way to have spent one's life. Oh, no. Why should I be? Here I sit. <laughs> 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 no, and I think it's fun. Do you ever feel you had a choice at all? I mean, that you that you could have chosen not to be an actress, or was it thrust on you? And, you know. Oh no, it was a made? very odd choice for me to make. Mm -hmm. I think coming from your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very odd. Yeah. Very odd thing for me to want to do. And. Um, I really don't know why I, I can be such passion to do it. I used to love fairy tales, and it, it used to have a little theater, you know, and it all thrilled me, and I adored westerns, which is all I ever saw. And I suppose it seemed to me romantic and thrilling, but it still does. I haven't changed my opinion at all. I should think probably working with John Wayne, you see. Right? He wasn't William S. Hart, but he was the next thing to it. <laughs> you like working with him, though? Oh, yes, I do. We have a lot of fun. He's a funny man. Have you ever met him? Never met him, no. Oh, he's a most entertaining creature and a very good actor. Very good actor. Really good actor. First rate, sharp, uh, clear mind, and uh, no dummy, yeah. no dummy. What, what they always say about, about, about Wayne when people start to talk about uh, screen stars, they'll say that uh, that he that he is a he's a personality rather than an actor. That he plays himself all the time on screen, whether he's in fact in a, in a cowboy uniform or a, you know occasionally the police Spencer, uniform. Spencer always used to say to Larry, Larry, who do you think they're going to think you are? <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> To a certain degree, that's true for great many people. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think that's anything against them. No, 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 but but, but, but there are certain people that one, one thinks that about, and I think there is a certain uh, justification to it. To say that he plays the same that part. That he plays the same part, whereas there are a good many others, including... Well, if you're uh, six foot four, and mm -hmm. you, I mean, if you could see me against him, I, he's, a, he's a, a giant, you know, mm -hmm. great, huge. I don't know what else, really, he could have done. He's limited by his, his uh, uh, appearance and sort of freedom of face, and he just looks like our, the American's idea of a Western hero, doesn't he? But it's curious, I remember seeing uh, uh, at one point some of his early, or one of his early pictures, and I forget when it was, must have been either late 20s or early 30s. Yeah. And in which he played, it was a very small part, maybe when it was first, in fact. And he played just a, a man working in an office. I think it was it was a Barbara Stanwyck picture. Oh. Uh, and and he didn't look anything like a man working in an office. Well, no, no, he didn't look like John Wayne. I mean, he oh. looked very much like a very sort of callow youth on screen. I mean, that was the picture that I kept having. I mean, that before he turned into our image of the man on horseback. But look at Bogey. Look at Bogey. Bogey. I have a picture of Bogey and Spence, where Bogey was the good boy with a portfolio under his arm. 
you know, taking his weekly paycheck home to Mama and Spence was the wickedest man in the world. <laughs> up the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither of them had become big stars. Was that a picture off, off screen or that on screen? No, it was a picture, of, I don't know whether it was on screen or not. Yeah. It was on, you know, they were doing the picture with Claire Lewis and it was directed yeah. by uh, Jack Ford. Yeah. And uh, have you ever seen him? No. What was it? And Bowie's personality, up the river. Oh, uh, up the river. Yeah. And Bogey's personality was adorable. He was a nice, sweet <laughs> fellow. And Arthur Hopkins cast Bogey in the Petrified Forest. And that changed everything, I guess. Changed everything. He became a killer, and he did right straight through it. There, there became uh, the Bogey personality that the public seized upon. Mm -hmm. And the personality of Spence became uh, Father Flanagan, and the public seized upon it in San Francisco. And the person who did that for, by, for uh, Metro thought he lost his mind was Van Dyke. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very interesting, those two men. Now, Spencer was accepted as a brilliant actor. He played Fury. Bogey was accepted as, uh, what do we say, nothing much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And Arthur uh, uh, Hopkins, who had real independence of judgment, he didn't give a rap what anybody thought about anything as long as he liked it. Mm -hmm. You asked him about a flop that he made, and he said, yes, well, I like it. Could, could you have imagined uh, uh, later on Tracy and Bogart uh, exchanging roles on having played? Yeah, they could because they're, they're uh, yes. I mean, Tracy has played. a blank essay. I mean, is, that, is that a possible image? And, as a what? No, say uh, Spencer Tracy in Casablanca rather than Bogart. Oh, yes, right. I mean, because that's the way Spencer started his career. Mm -hmm. I mean, Spencer in Fury, Spencer in The Last Mile, mm -hmm. Spencer in yeah. all those things. Well, that's my Kill last Killer Mears, you know. Mm -hmm. And Fury, did you ever see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's very interesting, too. Now, you see, I was extremely lucky because I came along at a, at a point in the movie industry where uh, uh, nothing like, quite like me had ever hit the thing with a loud voice and a very definite personality and a rather angular uh, look. And then in one year, 